Good morning and welcome to Tuesday morning prayer, the December the 27th, the feast of St. John the Evangelist, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And it's good to welcome our dear sister Jan with us this morning and thank you for the sound and vision check. And for those who've not logged in, you're welcome to our morning prayer. So let us just be still. Let us be still and in the silence. Let us breathe in the breath of God and allow the Spirit of God come upon us as we celebrate in this season of Christmas time the birth of our Saviour Jesus Christ. <coughs> and this morning I have lit this light in thanksgiving to God for each one of you, but especially I want to pray for our community, for dear sister Miriam in New Zealand, who recently relocated from the south of the island to the north and is struggling on many levels to adjust and is grieving for the friends and loved ones she left behind. But we pray also for the brothers and sisters who've left our community and we wish them a blessed Christmas and a peace-filled 2017. This light signifies and represents the presence of God. So let us be still in the presence of God and let us give thanks for all that we have received over the last few days. So we begin with our Tuesday morning prologue as we say, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother, and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Tuesday morning, we commune with the angel of joy, saying, angel of joy, descend upon earth and give beauty to all beings. You then reflect and feel yourself absorbing vibrations of joy from the beauties of nature as you contemplate the colours of sunrise, sunset, the song of a bird, and the aroma of flowers. And now we have a special hymn for St. John the Evangelist. The Lord is the source of all wisdom, come let us adore him. O God, come to my aid, O Lord, make haste and help me. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The saints who toiled from place to place, spreading the gospel of God's grace, now in their heavenly homeland dwell, with Christ whom here they serve so well. Alert at thy command to go, and everywhere thy word to sow. They went, O Master, far and wide, eager but yet unsatisfied. Thine was the task they took in hand, thine their good news for every land. Thine was their power, <clears throat> and, excuse me, and thine again their passion, for the souls of men. And our first reading this morning is our opening prayer of thanksgiving from the little book of Celtic prayers from Iona. There we go. In the beginning, O oh God, you shaped our soul and set its weave. You formed our body and you gave it breath. Renew us this day in the image of your love O great God, grant us your light. O great God, grant us your grace. O great God, grant us your joy this day, and let us be made pure in the well of your health. And now I'm guided to read from Psalms now, our first Psalm of the morning, Psalm 112. What about the man who trusts in God? and is committed to his will and his purposes. He is a man who is rich indeed, even amid the circumstances of poverty, the wealth and the blessings of God are within his reach. He is a man with purpose and meaning in his life, 
even amid the disorder and void of this temporal existence. He is aware of God's concern and love for him. He is a man who walks unafraid. The threats of violence or the prophecies of doom do not detract from his validity, nor do they alter his course. He is a man who relates to his fellow beings. He identifies with them in their sorrows and complaints and shares with them his life and his gifts. He is a man who is truly happy and through whom our God is working out his purposes in this world today. And our next reading comes from a little booklet, the UCB, and the theme is How Silently the Wondrous Gift is Given. And we're drawn to read from Luke chapter 2, verse 12. You will find a baby lying in a manger. One Christmas in London, Phil Yancey went to hear Handel's Messiah. He says, I'd spent the morning viewing remnants of England's glory crown jewels, a gold mace, the mayor's gilded carriage. Such images must have filled the minds of Isaiah's contemporaries who heard the promise, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. No doubt the Jews thought back to the glory days of Solomon when silver and gold were as common as stones. The Messiah who showed up, however, wore the glory of humility. The God who could order armies and empires like chessboard pawns emerged as a baby who depended on a teenage couple for shelter, food and love. In London, I caught glimpse of the way rulers stride through the world with bodyguards, trumpet fanfares, bright clothes, flashing jewellery. A head of state had recently visited the US with £4,000 of luggage, two outfits for every occasion, a personal hairdresser, and a host of other attendants. God's visit to Earth took place in an animal shelter with no attendants and nowhere to lay the newborn king but a feed trough. A mule could have stepped on him, the sky grew luminous with angels, yet who saw that spectacle? Illiterate hirelings who watched the flocks of others, nobodies who failed to leave their names. The story inspired an Episcopal priest visiting, visiting Bethlehem in 1865 to pen the familiar words, how silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given, so God imparts of human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. Let us just stay with that reflection because it's powerful, really powerful. I'm going to read again what that Episcopal priest put to paper. How silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given, so God imparts of human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. Lord, we really thank you for your incarnation on earth, for you are our role model this day. In a world that is so beautiful and vast, it is the cathedral of your God. A father, mother, God who loves all of us, regardless of color, race, ethnicity, gender orientation or other issues. You love us as we are, for you created us whole, perfect and complete. And yet we challenge you. We abuse your free gift, this sacred earth. We litter it. We litter everywhere. We abuse the forests, the rainforests, 
we desecrate all that is sacred and holy to you. In fact, your children rise, rise up and kill other children of yours. For Christians, Muslims and Jews, the children of Abraham, are not at peace. For they kill one another and maim one another with rhetoric. Where have we gone wrong, O Lord? How can we bring the children of God back to an even keel? Show us in the coming new year, O Lord, how we as a small community may play our part with those who join us, like Jan, where we give up our own free time to come and celebrate your blessings upon us. Amen. And now I'm guided to read from Jesus Calling by Sarah Young and to read the reading for the 27th of December. Just bear with me now. I am preparing you for, with, for what is on the road ahead, just around the bend. Take time to be still in my presence so that I can strengthen you. The busier you become, the more you need this time apart with me. So many people think the time spent with me is a luxury they cannot afford. As a result, they live and work in their own strength until that becomes depleted. Then they either cry out to me for help or turn away from me in bitterness. How much better it is to walk close to me, depending on my strength and trusting me in every situation. If you live in this way, you will do less but accomplish far more. Your unhurried pace of living will stand out in this rush crazed age. Some people may deem you lazy, but many more will be blessed by your peacefulness. Walk in the light with me today and you will reflect me to the watching world. And these are the words of Christ. Thanks be to God. And coming back to the divine office, we read for the Feast of St. John. Bear with me. A scripture reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John answered, You yourselves judge which is right in God's sight. To obey you is or to obey God. For we cannot stop speaking of what we ourselves have seen and heard. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the short responsory, you will make them rulers over all the land. You will make them rulers over all the land. Your name, Lord, will be remembered. You will make them rulers over all the land. And we pray the Gloria. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God. You will make them rulers over all the land. Our Benedictus Antiphon, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory. Alleluia. And now, my dear friends, I'd like to invite you to join me for the beautiful canticle of Zechariah, the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and he has redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour in the house of David his servant, as he promised through his prophets from of old, a saviour who would free us from our sin, from the hands of all our enemies, so his love for our fathers is revealed and his holy covenant remembered. He swore to Abraham our father to grant us that free from fear and saved from the hands of our enemies, we might serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. And as for you, little child, you shall become a prophet of God, the Most High. Yes, you shall go before the Lord to prepare his ways before him, to make known to his people their salvation through forgiveness of their sin and the loving kindness of the heart of our God who visits us like the dawn from on high and he will give light 
to those who sit in darkness and those who dwell in the shadow of death. He will guide them to the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, Mother, God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory. Alleluia. And now for our intercessions. Since we are part of that building which has the apostles for its foundation, let us pray to our Father, Mother God, for their holy people, and the response this morning, Lord, remember your church and all faiths. Lord, remember your church and all faiths. Father, Mother God, you made the apostles the first witnesses of the risen Lord. May we reveal Christ to the world. Response, Lord, remember your church and all faiths. Father, Mother God, you gave your Son to those in need. Help us to bring the gospel to all men and women today. Response, excuse me, Lord, remember your church and all faiths. Father, Mother God, you sent to us your word of life. May we labor to sow his word and reap a harvest of joy. Response, Lord, remember your church and all faiths. Father, Mother God, your Son became our reconciliation. May we help to give peace to our troubled hearts. Response. Lord, remember your church and all faiths. And now, coming to our little book of Celtic prayers, we read a few intercessions here. O Christ of the road of the wounded, O Christ of the tears of the broken, in us and with us the needs of the world, Grant us our prayers of loving and hoping. Grant us our prayers of yearning and healing. And now we pray for this coming day and for healing within and among the whole family of God. That's all faiths and none. So let us be still. Be still. started our morning prayer we remembered all of you here so we hold each one of you whom the Lord knows and loves and we pray especially for dear sister Miriam who's having some issues with ill health and we pray that she will be strong and that the move will be a blessing and that she will come back to morning prayer with us for she is a beautiful child of God who has struggled for many years with mental health issues, but has triumphed every one. So today we must ask God to continue to watch over our beautiful sister Miriam, who lives the life of a hermit now in North New Zealand. But we pray also for dear sister Nancy, who with her daughter have been ill over Christmas. We pray for all our community, past and present, and we give thanks to God for those who've come and brought a blessing with them and then departed, hopefully to continue to do God's work. We pray for Jan who joined us this morning, and with Jan we pray for all here, all on our prayer lists, for peace within and peace without. And we remember the children of Abraham who are still at loggerheads in the Middle East. We pray for an end to all these atrocities to God's innocent children, especially in Syria and in Iraq. We pray today for our religious leaders to be touched by the Spirit of God, that the Holy Spirit will come upon Pope Francis and His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Tich Nahan, to bring the people of God, the religious leaders of the world, to Assisi in 2017. We pray for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch, 
and head of the Church of England. And with Jan, we pray for my... Ah, oh, thank you, Jan. Uh, and for Brother Rob and Paul. Brother Paul is still on retreat at Sammy Ling in Scotland. For dear Brother Harry, for Brother Murray, who's on holiday with family in Leicestershire. And we send love, light and blessing to Richard in France. We pray a special prayer for the men and women who've dedicated their lives to God, who are weary today and who need prayerful support. So let us send them our love, not only to them, but to the whole family of God. And we send love to the parents of children around the world who may be exhausted after a busy Christmas day or a period leading up to Christmas day. So let us be still, just for a moment. back many fond memories for me when we used to chant the office in community. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer, a gift that was given to me by Sister Miriam four years ago. It's the Lord's Prayer from the Anglican Prayer Book in New Zealand. Eternal Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, the source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by all the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings, and your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on us. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forevermore. Amen. Right, our first prayer for the feast of St. John Rees, Almighty God, who through your Apostle John unlock for us the hidden treasures of your word, grant that we may grasp with fuller understanding the message he so admirably proclaimed. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus the Christ, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now for our closing prayer, and it's a benediction, a Celtic benediction, which I dedicate to all of us here. Deep peace, pure white of the moon to you. Deep peace, pure green of the grass to you. Deep peace, pure brown of the earth to you. Deep peace, pure grey of the dew to you. Deep peace, pure blue of the sky to you. Deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, and deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, and deep peace of the sun of peace to you. And as I come to blow out this light, I thank the Lord Jesus for touching our beloved sister Miriam in New Zealand this morning and for dear sister Nancy, and for all gathered here and all whom we have prayed for. May the Lord Christ, our physician, set them free to celebrate and praise his name. Amen. 
And that, dear friends, brings us to the end of morning prayer for this December the 27th on the beautiful feast of St. John the Evangelist, the one whom Jesus loved. So now we pray a simple blessing. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace of our God reign supreme in your heart this beautiful day. And if it's your bedtime, sleep well, dear brothers and sisters, and know that here you are loved. And thank you, Jan. Thank you for being a part of morning prayer with us. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.